Good afternoon, everyone. That yellow thing in the center, that's the sun. Where's our planet on the bottom? It's not one of the four largest ones. That sun is over a million times larger than our Earth, and as its activity state declines, you could expect massive changes on our planet as well. Jet stream shifting, atmospheric compression events. I've lined up the 100,000 strikes of lightning over the last day with the temperature difference in the fronts. That's soft. What do you think is going to happen in Australia? Oh, extreme thunderstorm warnings, large hail, damaging winds on tap right now. This is being followed by two months worth of rain falling in two hours and hail not melting 11 hours after the hail storm. Record cold on tap next few days in Australia. Something you don't see every day. Flash flooding and mudslide warnings for the Middle East. Close to a year's worth of rain in Kuwait City. Oh, it's happened three times this month. This is about how much water in the last event. Saudi Arabia turning into an inland sea with this amount of water coming down. Just over a week ago, flash floods hitting Petra and Jordan. It's all resulting in blooming deserts. And forecast through Thanksgiving in the Northeast U.S., all-time record cold. And please join me for many Ice Age Conversations tri-weekly podcast about these same issues. You can take it on the go. And during these uncertain times, I've teamed up with My Patriot Supply Long-Term Food Storage, a nice affordable starter kit, two-week food supply, 1,500 calories per day, breakfast, lunch, and dinners, plus the four-gallon storage containers included in that. This is a good first step in getting more self-sufficient. And if you click through the Prepare with Adapt 2030 page in My Patriot Supply, you can get this starter kit for 75 bucks. Please remember there's a limit of two per household in this special offer. I wanted to start you off here with a visual representation of our sun and how its magnetic field connects to our magnetic field on the planet. The very bottom left, you're going to see all the planets. You've got Jupiter, Saturn. Where are we in there? And I'm going to zoom it in to make it very clear to my point here. Third from the left with the moon. That sun is a million plus times larger than our Earth. So when it goes into a decline activity state, it's going to affect our planet. It already is. And then NASA coming out warning that record low temperatures in the future for our planet. And here we are, record lows. As we descend into the grand solar minimum, when we really get into solar cycle 25 and 26 on the right side, all the temperature records that will be broken will be once in a 400-year event at the minimum. So looking for atmospheric changes, 100,000 lightning strikes. This is over the south-central Mediterranean. Now you would expect this in, say, springtime, but generally not at the end of autumn heading into winter. doesn't make sense why there's this much activity until you look at the temperature gradient here and you start to see the cold air mass colliding with the warm. And I thought you can very easily see that distinct line. So what I did is I just put these together. Same areas where they have all the thunderstorms and the lightning. You can see where that line is. It's a pretty subtle combination between the blues and the oranges. Now keep that in mind on how intense these two fronts are slamming against each other. Now as we come over to Australia, another atmosphere compression event, two months of rain in two hours. And to continue on with the example, I put the orange arrows there. You can see how much more intense the bunching between weather fronts is in this particular instance. Today and tomorrow, Bureau of Meteorology putting out intense thunderstorm warnings all across the southeast part of the country or continent if you will large hail over the cities damaging winds power outages expected full warnings and where that red line is the possibility of tornadoes but it is heading into summertime down there so it would be like our spring you get a lot more violent weather in the turn from winter to summer but the Australian and New Zealand news media keeps talking about how warm it is. It's the warmest year ever. Yet look at these record cold temperatures on tap for the 21st. This is going to split the country like they saw 
and the Australian Super Freeze that sent frost up to within 1,500 miles of Papua New Guinea. Continuing on through the 22nd, that'll bring us up through Thanksgiving for those of you in the U.S. And I want you to take a look at the 20 to 25 degrees Celsius below normal temperatures. This is not Fahrenheit, this is Celsius, which would be something around 30 degrees Fahrenheit below normal temperatures where you see that very light purple. I'm going to bring you right over to Thanksgiving. We're experiencing the exact same thing. Northeast U.S. expected to shatter every record ever set for Thanksgiving. From New York up through the Maritimes of Canada, everything ever recorded will be broken during this event. Let's see how it's cataloged as it moves out. But again, these are Celsius temperatures looking at 20 degrees Celsius below normal temperatures. And I'm going to drop you over into Asia for a second. Again, I pointed out the collision line between the extreme cold on one side and the heat mass on the other. Problem is, this is going to sweep right over Mongolia, which it is, and into Heilongjiang in China. And guess what? They're harvesting right now. So these excessive winds and damaging hail are going to take the toll on the crops if they can't get it out of the ground. So now you start to know what to look for when you delve into some of these temperature anomaly maps. When you see these extreme, very thin lines, this is some of the most ferocious weather you're going to encounter in your lifetime. If you're in front of one of these lines, please take the warning seriously. Jumping over to the Middle East, Petra. Incredible area. I visited there back in the 90s. Bone dry. It's been bone dry for a very long time. So when I see weather maps that are talking about flash flooding, mudslides, road washout, warnings, no less... I'm thinking to myself, that's really strange because Turkey just received all-time record snows as well. Broke their records back to 1870 right now. So we're going to take a look at the progression from the last week and a few days until now. Extreme deluges hitting the Middle East. Flash flooding, sweeping, and I mean sweeping. Villages, cars, literally out to sea from inland destinations. The wadis, the riverbeds. The amount of water that came down was unprecedented. Just to give you an indication of what happened in Kuwait City, they received a year's worth of rain in less than a day. And you might shake your head and say, wow, that is incredible. But that's not really the incredible part. The incredible part is they've had a year's worth of rain three times this month in three different storms. Meaning that each storm dropped a year's worth of rain in a single event and they've had one per week. That should send a message that something is very mixed in our atmosphere, and these changes are real, and they're brought on by the sun, and we need to start discussing it more as to how our crops are going to fare and how we're going to feed our planet moving into global cooling. This is from the last storm. You can see how much water has come down, stranding the entire city. Love this one where they have the boat going past the cars, Feet and feet and feet of standing water. They're just not used to the runoff that should be put in place because they don't get these kind of rains ever. In multi-centuries, they haven't had these types of rains. And then roads turning into canals. You can see the four-wheel drive barely struggling through along with the tractor trailer. And then back over to Petra. Two flash floods in two weeks. It's the same event happening across the Middle East. There was a previous flash flood event that occurred on November 9th and then just nine days later, another. If you can't see the flooding happening, I'm just going to direct you to the very center of the picture. That's an overflowing river. So you can start to see how much water came down. Wherever it looks like it's moving and it's not a building, that's rushing water that's formed a new river gouging its way through the city. At the same time, you know, we've got a lot of tourists in Petra. And those white objects you see to the far right, those are cars being tossed down the river. I've linked everything below. You can go ahead and take a look at the videos involved in this. But you see those standing waves. That's rushing water creating rapids in what is the desert. Also terrifying for several people. These are called wadis. And when you get inside, they're basically canyons that extend up tens or hundreds of feet, and they're vertical walls. But these have been scoured out over tens of thousands of years by water 
and wind erosion. And when they do have floods, all the water rushes down these riverbeds. You gotta put this into perspective. Those people recording this video are trapped in this canyon in the Wadi. They don't even know if they're gonna make it out of there. They're gonna get swept down and drowned. Yet they took the footage. The water did not reach up to where they were and they lived to tell about it. How terrifying would that be? And over here to Saudi Arabia, the claim is flooding in the desert that has never been seen before. Now, apparently, this even goes back to the days and the accounts of the traders along the Silk Road and the Arab traders. We're talking back 800, 1200 years ago, have never talked about this much water. And that is the desert there. It's under three feet of water. So as the water's been draining, and there's been so many of these events from Oman to Jordan to Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and everywhere in between, this is the end result. The deserts are blooming again. And if we go over to Northeast Africa and the Sahel, the exact same thing is happening. The deserts are blooming around our world again. In my personal opinion, this is not a 400-year event that we're starting to repeat now. It's something much longer in duration, much heavier, more powerful cycle that we're encountering right now. It's the only possible explanation. Arab traders never talked about deserts flooding three feet deep as far as you could see turning it into an inland sea. Not even one account of that. Yet the deserts are blooming again. Some amazing photos coming out. Look at all these desert flowers. Now the thing that really struck me the most, I love the flowers, I love the camels, really beautiful. This is the aerial view of the desert in Saudi Arabia. And the same thing's happening in the Sahel in Northeast Africa. And it makes you wonder why the Chinese are there with all their investment in their rail lines going out into the middle of the deserts. But now those same rail lines are going right into the area, the middle of those fields, which could be crop growing areas. What did they know about the thousand-year cycles, the multi-millennia churning of us in the cosmos? They knew something. That's why they built those rail lines out there. I have heard this and seen this somewhere else, and I cannot recollect it. They talk about the greening of the deserts signals a turning of an age. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. All these events that you've just seen presented here are called atmospheric compression events. These will be new vocabulary words that will become common spoken words around the water cooler as we move forward into 2019 and 2020.